How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf. And uh, today I wanted to check out these DLC. Uh, they've added two new Jeeps. It's like as a DLC pack. Uh, it cost five quid, so I just kind of wanted to make a video on them. Obviously they're new. People would be wondering, is it worth spending the money or whatever? I was thinking the same thing. Obviously I've got them because... Yeah, I'm going to test them out, but just to let you know, like, do I think they're worth the money or whatever? Um, so yeah, like you say, you got two. You got the Jeep, was it CJ7 or something? And then you got the Jeep Wrangler. To be honest, they're pretty similar, as you can see, as I'm flicking through. The power-to-weight ratio is, like, at the low end on this Jeep, the Jeep Wrangler, it's, like, S+, plus and it's filled out. Uh, that's a little just description, so I assume, like, I believe from the description, that Jeep's some, like, say, the 1980s version or whatever. This is, like, a bit of a updated, facelifted version, but as far as the game goes, this I'd, I wish it told us the actual weight of the vehicles, because... Yeah, it's all well and good that the power to weight is a lot higher, but what does that mean? Have I got more power, or have I got less weight, or a combination also? It'd just be nice if there was a little bit more accurate on the details. Uh, yeah, the, the Jeep Wrangler, like you can see here, flicking between them. It's just... That Jeep is just a bit smaller in every way, and it's like, yeah, it's never a, it's never usually a good thing, is it? Uh, I just cut ahead of it, but you can see from like... Because I'll do a review on these anyway, so... Uh, as I go through like all the different attachments I put on, the biggest tyres this can have is the 31 inch tyres. I could put chain and stuff on, I just put muds because these new maps haven't really got snow or anything so I don't chain down as uh, needed for me at the minute. This one by comparison, again I'll skip ahead because when I do a review I'll go through all the bits and bobs you can add, but the biggest tyres you can have on this is 36 inch which is pretty decent. It's uh, a bit better and as you can see it sits taller, it's got uh, tuned custom suspension on top of just like normal middle and raised or the top whatever it is um, Yeah, there's like four total options for this one. The other good thing as well as checking here because it's got a spare tire on the back um, Some vehicles it I'll be honest. I've not tried it for a while But it used to do it on the loaf if you and it probably still does I've just not checked um, if you put a spare tire on the back of the loaf It won't let you attach a trailer, which is just s stupid so Obviously, I just know I haven't put a spare tire on the loaf for like a year. Um, yeah, this thing it can still have a trailer and everything, but to point out, while I remember the uh, the other Jeep can't have any trailers. As soon as you go to the trailer store, it just said for me, yeah, none. Like as it does with the uh, what's it called, the Khan Marshall. There's a few others, you know. If you go to the trailer store with a tatter in, uh, that says you can't have any trailers, etc. So it's that situation. So this Jeep is just. Yeah, like, you're basically buying the Jeep pack for this Jeep, and the other Jeep is just, yeah, a Jeep light. <laughs> it's like a diet Jeep, by comparison. I did like that, there's a bit of a sort of essence of the loaf going on, how it flicks itself back. I flung a winch out anyway, because I've got the autonomous on this, I think I had the advanced on the uh, other Jeep, which I'll fly around in in a minute. Uh, yeah, I, li I quite like the way it flicked back to its wheels. So, as far as do I think it's worth the money, to be honest, like, like I said, you're basically getting this Jeep. The other one, it's cool, but it's just... It's this Jeep, but it's slightly smaller wheels, less power, blah, blah, blah. So, and it's only a Scout. It's like, we've got plenty of Scouts in this game, so strictly speaking, I'd sort of say no. Obviously, I've got to factor in, it's like, it depends what five quid means to you. If you're a millionaire and you're playing this game, just buy it, because <laughs> you ain't going to miss five quid. If you're a school kid playing this and you get a pound pocket money or a dollar pocket money a week, that's five weeks pocket money or something. You no, know, it isn't really worth it. The only exception I'd say to that, if you're a fan of Jeeps, or you own a Jeep and all that, yeah, how often is it you get a, your real-life car in a game that you enjoy? So, if it's something like that, I'd get it. And I have to say, within, say, the confines of the mechanics of SnowRunner, it actually does feel pretty nice. I've been driving it around for a bit tonight, not as much as I wanted, to be honest. I did. I would have liked sort of an extra hour or two. I, just, I had felt pretty ill yesterday, got sleep late, woke up late, blah, blah, blah. Would have liked a little bit longer, but I've been driving, like, mainly this one. Probably drove this one round for a couple of hours. Drove the other one round for about an hour. Um, yeah, I've definitely got a good feel of them, like, compared to all the other Scouts. And they've nailed it pretty well, to be fair. The weight distribution, all that feels pretty decent. You can see now, when I was jumping along, like, it's not trying to roll every two seconds like the car marshal used to. I believe they did attempt to fix the car marshal, so I don't think that's as bad as it used to be. But, yeah, overall, I mean, I quite like... It's funny, the engine sounds... You can hear it. They're like early 90s Sega Mega Drive level of... I don't know what the word is. Not sloppiness, but do you know what I mean? They're not... 
it's not like they've lined the uh, the engine notes up with the way you press accelerate and all that. It's just engine noises that kick in every now and then. <laughs> and yeah, it, I don't know. I quite liked it. It sounded pretty good. So yeah, this Jeep, I do genuinely think is good and all that. If it was a free vehicle in the game, I'd say, yeah, it's well worth like getting it and driving it around for a bit. I'd say as a rough placement, kind of... This is the smaller Jeep now, but the Jeep Wrangler... I don't know, ballpark, top five, top seven scouts in the game, which is not too bad for me personally. i got like the Loaf, obviously, at the top. Uh, the Lodestar I like, the F750 I like. Uh, that new Sentinel they added isn't terrible or anything like that. Yeah, but it, it's decent, it feels right. This one, I have to say, in its own right, again, definitely they've bumped the price up by just throwing this one in, but it's not... If the whole pack was three quid, I'd say, yeah, that's not bad for... But... It's just inherent within this game. I don't need scouts that much, so it's just... Yeah, like, it's not something I'm desperate to collect. Like, if I wanted to drive a scout, and obviously I'd take the loaf, but if I wanted to drive a scout for the sakes of a scout and try and go a bit faster and blah, 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 there's... Yeah, I've got the F750, I've got that new Sentinel. Uh, the car marshal, like I said, I, they did attempt to fix it, and I have drove it since, and it was not bad. They got some way closer to fixing it. Uh, the Hummer's pretty decent if you get the roof rack off. I can say, I did drive both the, I tested it, like, well, you can see at the minute, I've got no roof rack on. Um, I think the Jeep Wrangler I was just in did have the roof rack on in that footage, and then there'll be more Jeep Wrangler footage coming up that's not got the roof rack on. That didn't appear to affect the speed and anything. I don't know if they've fixed that across the board. To be fair, I'll probably have to uh, just quickly check that sometime when I've got, like, half an hour spare that I can uh, just fly through the Scouts, because, obviously, yeah, that used to affect, like, the Hummer pretty bad. Uh, once that uh, Coca-Cola dude told me that take the roof rack off and it'll handle normal, it was like the Hummer was way better shot up. And the Hummer's decent if you just don't put the roof rack on it. At least these don't suffer from that, so you can actually carry supplies around. But like I said, um, it missed the footage. You can see as I switched to this footage, I lost like the first 20 seconds. So I pulled out of the garage, I tried to get a trailer and it just it doesn't even offer you a list of trailers. I thought what it might say, because that spare wheel's on the back, you know, it'll offer you the list of trailers, but it'll say cannot attach it because there's something in the way or whatever. Yeah, it just, that's it, you can't get trailers for this. And that's what I mean, where it's not offering anything, nothing that the Jeep Wrangler can't do. It's just, this is, yeah, a Jeep Wrangler light. I was trying to roll it there, by the way. I could have stayed out of that, I just wanted to see what the handling characteristics were like. Overall, it did, there was a few times I was trying to sort of roll it on the way, and it wasn't like it was desperate to roll, so it's, again, the weight distribution is pretty decent, it appears the weight's lower down overall. Um, this is now on to the new maps that we've got, uh, Factory Grounds, so this new Phase 5 maps, just because I kind of figured when I was testing them out, again, I didn't really want to go driving, like, if I'm going to do the review, I may as well save that footage for the review, but... Since they've released these new maps and that's what we're going to be on, I just wanted to see, like, yeah, it's irrelevant how it handles on, I don't know, Northport, really, for me, compared to how it handles on these new maps. You can see, and this is not specifically the Jeep Wrangler's fault, it's just I've hit a muddy patch now and it goes slow and that's what scouts are like in this game. I mean, even the low fly is obviously my favourite scout in the game, but I don't really use the loaf a lot as its intended role as a scout, I'll, I'd rather stick it on top of a truck and then I'll take that truck and the loaf scouting. So, yeah, I, I have to say, though, it does handle pretty nicely. It's something it feels similar-ish to, but probably with a bit more power, and this is not a bad thing, is the CK1500, which was the first stock truck you get when you start this game, but obviously that's like the stock version. Once you've been able to fully upgrade the CK, it is a nice vehicle, the CK. It's sort of just fast enough that it gets a little bit of a drift going on, but it doesn't start to get into the sort of weird SnowRunner driving mechanics at the top end. And that's, like, it's the nature of this game. I get it, it's a terrain physics and all the rest of it to... to focus on certain characteristics in this game. They have to kind of ignore other characteristics, and it'd be fair to say a game like Grand Theft Auto V objectively drives better than vehicles in this game, if that makes sense, but Grand Theft Auto V's not making driving part of the overall challenge. This game is specifically about struggling to drive over rough terrain so it kind of makes sense but yeah that's just sort of what I've, uh, I came to the conclusion I was, I was heading down here because I was curious to see if I could cut across uh, this little uh, river section where that uh, Azov Antarctic was drowned I thought this would be a pretty good test for me I'll kind of get a little hint how badly does it float not float you know can it resist like this current washing along uh, to the side 
And I came across here yesterday, I, I did it in a couple of vehicles, did it in the Zix 605R, um, the Dolphin. But to be fair, I didn't. I wasn't necessarily thinking like, oh, I'll definitely make it over here to begin with. But you know what, as soon as I clicked into the interior, I was like, oh, that's such a... I've never owned a Jeep or anything, but that dash, <laughs> that dashboard and speedometer and all that just absolutely got like a 90s-ish feel to it. I think uh, maybe this is 2000, you know what I mean. That's, uh, yeah, that pretty much looks like most dashboards and cars I've ever had. Pretty familiar. So you get to this point, this has always bothered me a bit with Scouts. As you can see, I'm in low range with the diffs on. It's got switchable diffs, so you have to go in low range to have the diffs on. See how that current was carrying me to the side a bit? I just haven't... It, there's no option for me to apply more revs. Like, if I went and got the... Uh, what have I got? The freeway gearbox. So if I went and got the snowrunner gearbox, I know I'd get high-low and all that. But it's a slower gearbox in general. It's just... For a scout, like realistically, if I put this in high gear and I put the dolphin in high gear, dolphin will eat this for breakfast. In real life, I'd be willing to bet just down a straight road, the jeep would eat the dolphin for breakfast because obviously the dolphin's like a purpose-built off-road, big military-esque vehicle. This is a it's a car. It's like what people drive every day. So this should, to me, it feels like when you put it in high that like the scouts never feel fast enough to me in high gear. That's just another reason that I wouldn't... Yeah, trucks are objectively better in this game than a scout. The loaf is just a goddamn beast. Like, as like a, a piece of equipment you attach to a truck. For the most... I mean, well, as you've seen, he's a goddamn horse, a vehicle. He rescues many trucks. He's, uh, he's got his uses. But yeah, as far as, like, if I wanted to go scouting somewhere, I'll just take a truck and a loaf. And if I get to a point where I've got to, like, squeeze through a few trees, I'll just jump the loaf off the roof of the truck and send him in. But... I'd rather get to that point with a truck because they're just faster, have more chance of travelling at a decent speed through muddy sections like this. But you can see that thing climbed a pretty steep hill back there. Again, I, I do quite like it. It's, it's not a bad thing at all. It's, just, it's five quid for the DLC. It's not that cheap, really. You consider the entire uh, Season 2 pass is 20 quid. So it's four times more than this. Yeah. And for that, you're going to get, like, well, we've already got two maps and two trucks. And we're going to get, I assume, at least another six maps then. If not, maybe eight if they make the last phase, like, a four-mapper again. We're going to get another six-odd vehicles, maybe more. They might do three vehicles per phase in some. So, if you, you know, equate it like that, the season pass is way more of a bargain. Whereas, yeah, this thing, not necessarily in a scummy way, but it's kind of like... It's an off-roading game, they know that there's going to, you know, Jeep enthusiasts in this game are going to cross over and they're going to make some money from that. They may well have paid money to secure the Jeep brand name, so it is what it is. But like I said, for five quid, you get in this Jeep. The other one's only really going to mean anything to people who own that Jeep, really, because, yeah, this one is just it's bigger, better, longer. <laughs> That's what she said, but it is. If someone said you want an extra two inches on your knob, you'd be like, of course I do. It could be horrifically disabled from too many inches. It'd be like Jeff Goldblum from the fly levels of KILL ME! But behold my massive fly knob first with two extra inches. That's just nature, it's not my fault. Doesn't mean I have to use them, but one day. Not like you got any more? Oh well, funny you should ask actually. Got a few extra kicking around if you're interested. One owner from new, meticulously polished, all that. Oddly tanned for some reason, despite the fact I'm white as fuck. Not really sure how that works, to be honest. I've said it before, but... I'm so white, if I wore shorts I could get a job as a traffic cone and just stand on motorways closing lanes with the reflective whiteness of my legs, but for some reason. Got some kind of like southern Italian about to cook a de pizza and serenade me. It's like, when the hell did he get an all year tan and I didn't? Not sure how that worked, but it is what it is. I've got some theories, but I'm not too sure how happy YouTube would be for me to fully explore them. If all else fails, I might have just figure out where women hide their emergency stash of fake tan. But anyway, yeah, as far as <laughs> the Jeep goes, I mean, driving across it, it actually did pretty well across it. I thought it wouldn't make it back across. It's close to floating, and you'll see a little bit later on, I do drive in some deeper water, and it will eventually float. It's not loaf levels ago. I mean, it's never going to be a goddamn horse or a vehicle. We don't need one. We've got a goddamn horse or a vehicle, and it's called the loaf. But, um, yeah, I mean, this thing actually did make it across here, so within even, like, this map, this, to be honest, was one of the sections I thought it would, yeah, get bitten on. Even like crawling up here, it gets stuck on this little tree branch a little bit, but I do personally think they could add a little bit more grip to some of these ties, kind of like people I mentioned it before, I have, but 
there is a few situations where a little bit more I think would be a quite nice banner. What I'd quite like to see in this game, to be honest, is a, a manual gearbox. Because, I mean, this, again, it's nothing, this Jeep specifically, it's just the nature of scouts, particularly in this game. But obviously, if you're driving along in 5th, 6th gear, you let off the revs a little bit, and then it's suddenly, just the way the game works, it drops down into 1st. Unless you just are perpetually kind of tapping L1 here, there, and everywhere, and it'll drop down more. Tapping L1 is the closest you're going to get to a manual in this game. Um, yeah, but it'd be nice to have a full manual, it'd be pretty cool. It'd almost like refresh the entire game in the sense of I could almost go back around every map with the vi different vehicles with a manual and yeah, try it out that way. I appreciate in some ways they do kind of use the way the gearboxes work to apply difficulty, but I don't know, if they had a manual the difficulty I don't think could be relevant anymore. You'd just be enjoying driving your vehicle from A to B. Does, you, you're not really going to care if it takes half an hour or two hours. If you get stuck, it's like, well, I'll just go and get another vehicle and drag it out and blah, blah, blah. You're just enjoying the fact that you're messing around then on a map. It doesn't even matter if you like. I do all the time. Um, I'll go and, yeah, stick a loaf on a dolphin or, and just go rallying around a map. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. It's like spare time and then I finally twist my own arm like fine I'll make a video on something relevant but I go messing around on this game all the time and uh, yeah for that like I said this Jeep is uh, not bad but it's just that's the conclusion I get to is it's not worth five quid not unless Jeep means something to you again yeah if you own this vehicle in real life like uh, I yeah I the car I've got E30 325 if they ever add an E30 BMW into a game I automatically want to buy it or whatever, it's irrelevant <laughs> if it, well, I'm hoping it's obviously going to be good, but I just, yeah, it's not that often you get a chance. I'm even going through here, I mean, it's not doing terrible, I, I was in the interior view there because I was enjoying the, uh, the old school looking dash, but I don't know, hit a tree or something, didn't roll though, that's what I mean, the, uh, they're, they're not, it doesn't feel bad for all, it doesn't feel unrealistic or anything, I'd, I'd say as a ballpark, I don't know a lot about off-road, I'm not trying to pretend like I do, I'm pretty bloody... I've done some spare-of-the-moment hillbilly off-roading <laughs> here, there and everywhere, but I don't know the first bloody thing about off-roading, so... Uh, yeah, but I just imagine, generally speaking, that I don't think this is a, a particularly inaccurate representation of what I imagine a Jeep would do. I'd like to say, personally, Jeep doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me, but I don't know, overall say I've got a above neutral <laughs> opinion of Jeep. I'd, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't be against owning one. It's just, yeah, the off-roading thing. Never, uh, not to say never been my thing, like I said, a few spare of the moment, <laughs> impromptu, hillbilly off-roading. I remember one, I can't remember if I told you before, but me and Ad were in the Isle of Man driving in a BMW 525, so certainly not an off-roader. <laughs> but we started going down some road, I can't remember where, but it, I think it was heading out of Douglas. And it started off as a little country lane, and just as we got further and further down there, then it turned into a dirt track. And then by the time we were like two miles, where are they? I don't even know where it could have been on the Isle of Man, because the Isle of Man's tiny, and how far we travelled down this road and didn't see anybody. There can't be that many places in the Isle of Man where that's even possible. But we kept driving further and further down this road until honestly, like a mile and a half down it, we were the big ruts that other 4x4s and tractors have been driving down there. We got there's bricks sticking out of the bloody mud. We were like, you could hear it bottoming out on the uh, oil sump, fuel tank, who knows what, it was hitting everything under the car, but we just carried on because we were stubborn. And the thing that I just remember that was a bit funny was like, it reminded me of a scene from Father Ted, because for no apparent reason, as we drove past this gateway to a field, there was five odd, four or five farmers just stood in this field, all talking to each other, and they all just stopped and looked over at us that was just slowly driving past them at two mile an hour rallying over like yeah broken concrete slabs and all sorts here are here the underneath our car like <laughs> how the hell we didn't blow a tire or anything i do not know but we stuck it out we made it to the other side and um, yeah so like i said that that's it bit of a ramble there at the end they're both pretty cool the jeep wrangler is easy just the best one so you may as well just consider it that if that's worth five quid you get it if not i'd skip it you ain't missing it we've got enough scouts that you ain't missing out. So yeah, that's about it for today anyway. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. And I'll be back soon.